Hey folks, I'm Sean O'Shea with Kauai. I'm here with my friends at Craft Music, and they had a very clever idea. They invited me up to shoot this video on tips and tricks and kind of different things that you can do with your new Kauai CA58 digital piano. Let's get started and take a look. When I first saw this cheek block control display, I, I felt just a little bit intimidated. And just a few minutes later, I realized it's really only seven controls overall. It's up, down, left, right, and one, two, three, with the great screen showing you where to push. It's simple, here's what I mean. So again, up, down, left, right, and one, two, three. One, two, and three indicated by the screen right above here. In this case, if I were to push one, I'd be operating in the virtual technician. Push two, it'd bring me to the primary menu and three into the music mode. Hey, while I'm here, I just want to point something out. There's three buttons above or, or sections up above that sometimes causes confusion. Folks will say, oh, I see transpose it. I've been touching transpose and I'm not sure how to get there. Well, that actually is kind of a, a warning light of sorts. When your instrument is transposed, you see now it's a black background with white letters. That will invert to a white background with black letters when the instrument is transposed. That's kind of nice, especially for the church musician who maybe just uh, moved a certain hymn up five steps and then goes to start another song and not realizing that it's been transposed, it's great to have that warning. Same thing if you connect headphones, watch what happens here. See, warns you that your headphones are plugged in. Well, gosh, wouldn't you know that? Well, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes you forget possibly that there's an adapter and you pull out your headphones and realize that this is, or, or not realize, I should say, that this is still left behind. So that's a little warning that that's happened. Same true if you have a USB device remaining in the instrument, the warning here to tell you about it. One of my favorite things to do on the CA58 is to combine or layer two sounds at once and come up with a whole new sound. Let me show you how to do that. I really love this SK Concert Grand Piano, but I could move around and you know experiment with some of the other pianos, but I'm gonna stick right now with the SK Concert Grand. Let's explore the string section. There's a few different strings in there and I'm moving my right and left arrows to find my way around that. Really, there again, I like the one that comes up first the slow strings. So how do I combine them? Well, just touch the two. Some of you who have watched my demo videos, especially where I'm playing the piano and strings together, have noticed that the strings seem to fill up the space between my chords pretty nicely. Well, let me show you how I made myself sound better than I really am. It's called the damper hold function, and it's something you really might want to take advantage of. So here again, I want to go to the menu. It says right here, you want to touch button number two, and we're in the menu. I happen to know that what I'm looking for is in the basic settings, so I touch enter. See, the screen is really walking me through all of this. Moving the up and down buttons, and in this case I'm moving up to number seven, damper hold. What you want to do is turn that from the off position to the on position. So I'm going to move to my right arrow, and now it's on. Watch what happens now. Let me back up and go back out of all this and go back to my layer. Now watch what happens to the strings. Now my hands are not on the keys, but I'm holding my damper pedal down. So as I pick my hands up and I change my cording, the orchestra sort of follows along, thereby making me sound better than I really am. And I'm always in favor of that. Now you wanna be careful you know, about your playing. You wanna make sure that, that you've picked your pedal up fully between your chord changes and that sort of thing. But once you get used to using this damper hold, I think it's an incredibly valuable tool. 
Now, right now, I think I would like more emphasis on the piano sound and a little bit less on the strings. So let's take a look at the screen together. I want to edit this layer. What do you suppose I would do? Of course, there it is. It says number two is your edit mode, so touch button number two. And right up front is the balance between these two sounds. So let's use the left and right arrows and see which it's turning down. Yep, it's turning down the strings as I move to the left, or it could have turned down the piano if I move to the right. I want to bring the strings down to maybe a six out of nine. That feels pretty good. Perfect. That's just how we want it. So there we have kind of a customized setup here. Uh, we've picked the two sounds that we want. We've adjusted the level. We've set up the pedal the way we want it to work. You don't necessarily want to have to do that every time you want to do this same sound. Well, here's where we explore the registration mode. It's kind of like you find the favorite station in your car radio and you set it for instant recall on number three. Let's do something here with that and show you how it works. So let's get to registration mode by touching the registration button. Now, I'm going to take a quick look through my different registrations that are already on here. There are two different banks, A and B, each bank having eight sounds. So there's a total of 16 registrations built into the instrument. And I'm exploring just using the right button, and now we're over into B, organ and choir, harpsichord and strings... Hmm, you know what? This vibraphone and bass, that's really not a combination I would ever use. So I think I'm going to go ahead and replace that with what we have done here today. So I touch and hold registration. It brings us up. Press any key, one through eight. And remember, it was number eight that I wanted to go ahead and overwrite. Touch it. And it gives me the opportunity here to rename it. Well, I'm not going to have you wait and sit tight while I rename every single letter here, but let's just change a couple things so that we know that it changed. And number two is our store. Store. Go ahead. And a little tone tells me that that's been accomplished. So now, when I shut the instrument off and come back another day, this will be just a couple button pushes away in the registration mode, and that whole change that we made uh, to the, the strings and the volume and the pedal and all that jazz will be there waiting for us. Some of you have asked me how I got the drums playing in the background. Well, that's actually pretty fun. You go into metronome settings here, and to get to the metronome menu, push and hold the metronome for just a couple of seconds. The default is that it's 120 beats per minute, and again, using your left and right arrows, you can change that. Down here is the volume of the metronome. And here in the middle is the time signature. You get to some simple changes like three-quarter time versus four-four time. And way, way better players than me might get into all these different crazy rhythms. But move up past those. Ah, there's 100 different drum beats that you can mess around with. So a great example might be, watch this. Not very inspiring, is it? Let's move up past and go. Way more fun. By the way, I think you might have some fun exploring uh, the demonstration mode. You know, there's certain instruments that I'm, I'm really not very good at playing, like the harpsichord. I, I'm just not a classical kind of player, for example. So I want to give a good example of what the harpsichord ought to sound like. Go into music mode. Here again, indicated button number three. And the first one that comes up is demo. Go ahead and enter that mode and it'll start playing right away, the SK Concert Grand Piano. But I'm going to go ahead and touch harpsichord. Ta-da! Or I want to check out the electric piano.
or the bass guitar. And by the way, it'll actually scroll from sound to sound to sound non-stop. So kind of fun if you have some friends over and just want to show off your piano without actually having to sit at it. All right, another simple application, transpose, meaning that you can play in any key. Well, you can sound like you're playing in any key, let's put it that way. For example, let's say you have rehearsed a song for days in the key of C, and you get to a gig and find your, uh, your singer decides she wants to do it in C sharp. Well, I, I don't know about you guys. I can't play in C sharp. I mean, I, I can play in D flat, but not C sharp. No way. So I want to transpose this song up just half a step. I go into the menu and I go into basic settings there again. Enter. And look, the first one that comes up is key transpose. So I've learned the song here, but I need it to sound like it's here. Easy. And now let's say you're leaving this song to go play a different one. Let's back out and go back to the main menu. Uh-oh, look. The indicator is lit up. Transposed up three steps. Are you sure? So that's a great warning button for that. Again, I'm Sean O'Shea with Kauai. I hope that you found this video helpful and useful in some way. And as always, you know, if you have any questions on your Kauai CA-58 or any of the Kauai instruments, you can reach out to your friends at Kraft via phone, email, or live chat. Thanks for watching.